if you're working with both Power BI and Tableau or transitioning from Power BI to Tableau or vice versa, or if you're simply just curious how they compare, this video is for you. In this video, we will look at creating a simple bar graph using these two tools. In future videos, we will create other charts and compare other features. I'll see you in a bit. Let's create a bar chart using Tableau first. We can start by connecting to a data source. And from Tableau's interface, if you already have it open, you can use connect to data or connect using this database icon. Let's connect to data. It's an Excel file. In this connection screen, we're going to drag over orders. We're going to create a bar chart using this data. Once we drag it over, we're going to see other options. There's an option for connection, for data source filters, and we also see a preview of some of the records that are inside orders. To create a new chart, which is also called a worksheet or a view, we simply click on Sheet. There are also some shortcuts at the bottom. We can also create a new sheet using this icon. Once we are in the new sheet, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust some default properties for fields that we're going to use. So for example, sales and profit, I'm going to control click both of those. And in here, we're going to change the default property, number format, and we want both of these to show up as currency. So currency custom, zero decimal places. There's a few options to creating charts in Tableau. Tableau comes with a feature called Show Me. And this feature allows you to select possible appropriate charts based on fields that you select. So for example, if I select category, subcategory, let's say profit and sales from the sidebar, you're going to notice that some charts in Show Me have become enabled. So I can simply cycle through them and pick which one I think is appropriate. But in this case, we're actually going to start from scratch. We're simply going to drag over subcategory to rows because we want to have a horizontal bar chart. We're going to take sales, put that on columns. I do have a video on the significance of rows and columns in Tableau. I will link it up in the card above and the description down below if you are curious to learn more about it. And now to sort this, if we want this to be sorted by sales in descending fashion, we can simply hover over the axes and click on the icon right beside sales. So in here, just click on this icon. Let's adjust this a little bit. If we want this ordered by subcategory, because that is a text field or a descriptive field, there is also an icon right beside subcategory that allows us to sort this alphabetically, ascending or descending fashion. If we want the bars to be colored by profit, we can simply take that field or that measure and drop it to the color property in the marks card. In Tableau, any formatting that we do on the mark, and right now the mark is a bar, any formatting that we need to do happens in the marks card. So we can change the color, we can adjust the color, we can adjust the size, the label, the detail, the tooltip, and depending on the mark that we choose, there might be a sixth property in here. So let's drag over profit. If we want to make changes to the color, we can simply double click on the color legend and it will open up the color palette. So from here, we can decide what color palette we want. We can reverse it. We can step the color should we want to. So in here, if we only want five different colors, we can just adjust the color ranges. And we can also adjust the start, the end, and the center values. We're just going to leave it as is. Let's adjust the title, so double click on the title. And this is just an editor. We can just adjust the formatting from here. So let's change the font, change the size. Let's call the sales by sub category. And if we wanted to add some metadata, we can simply click on the insert dropdown. And this allows us to add additional metadata. For example, the data source name, maybe the update time, maybe the sheet name or the workbook name. There's also page count, page number, page name. Let's just click on OK. If we wanted to show some kind of average line, in the sidebar, there's an analytics tab. 
In the analytics tab, we can simply drag over some of these lines, a constant line, an average line, median with quartiles. We can also add totals where appropriate. Notice that some of these options are disabled and these are going to be enabled depending on the visual that we choose. So if we have the data points to support some of these options, they're going to be enabled. So if we simply want to drag the average line over, we're given the option of either putting it in cell, in pane, or in table. So I'm just simply going to use table. And if we wanted to change the formatting of the average line, we can simply right click on the average line or right click on the axis that contains the average line, edit the reference line, and in here we can make our adjustments. So for example, if we want our label to show something else, we can simply go to the label, we can make this custom, and we can say this is the average and also show the value. If we wanted to have labels to accompany the bars, we can simply take the field that we want displayed and put it in the label property in the marks card. So in here, if we want to display sales, we can drag sales over. We can change where this is placed. So for example, under label, we can decide that this is going to be center or maybe at the base. It's up to us. I'm just gonna leave it as automatic right now. These are some of the other options for labels. So for example, we don't have to show all the labels all the time. Maybe we only want to mark the minimum and maximum value or only when the labels are selected or highlighted. So perhaps let's just leave this as minimum and maximum values. If we hover over any of the bars, it has a default tooltip and we can also change this tooltip Usually in Tableau, we want this to be formatted and provide more narrative when possible. So in this case, I'm just going to quickly change the formatting. So let's filter by date in Tableau. Let's drag over order date. These are all the options available in Tableau when filtering by date. I will have a different video talking about dates in Tableau, but for now, we are simply going to choose discrete year. So year, next and I'm just going to select everything for now, click on OK, and we're also going to show this filter. So on the drop down, show filter. Showing the filter means that your end user is able to adjust this visual as they need to. So it really encourages that exploration. And some of the controls for discrete field filters are these. So I'm simply going to use the slider. We can adjust the filter and legend titles as well. And let's make just one more adjustment in here. In the label, I'm going to change this so that the marks to label is actually highlighted because I want to add a highlighter as well. So label, highlighted, and now I'm going to add a data highlighter to subcategory. So on the drop down, show highlighter. And what this allows us to do is as we now hover over any of these values, it is going to be highlighted and the sales label is also visible. The other thing we can notice as well is the reference line also changes, but the original reference line, the original average is still there in the background. It's just dimmed, but it's still there. So we can still make a comparison. There's a few ways to export this data outside of Tableau. So if we simply wanted to export all the values from the visual, we can go to worksheet, export, and here we can export the data or we can export the cross tab to Excel. So worksheet, export, cross tab to Excel. And this is the resulting Excel file. Another option is selecting all of the bars in this visual. So if I press control A, notice that all of it is selected, control C, and in Excel, just pressing control V or pasting the value that we just copied. And this pretty much gives us the same values. So now let's create a similar bar chart in Power BI. Once you have Power BI open, you're going to see that some of the features and the tools are slightly different. Even the placement is slightly different. On the right hand side of the canvas is where we can find all the fields, the visualizations and the filters. Let's connect to our data source first. So we're going to import from Excel. So let's connect to this data source, click on open. Now this is what's similar to the connection screen in Tableau. So in here, we can select the orders table or the orders worksheet that we want to visualize. If we simply click on this, we're going to see a preview of all the records inside this table. Within Power BI, we can also do a lot of transformations. So should we need to, we can transform our data. But right now, we're simply going to load it. 
Once we load it, we can see all the fields that we can work with. Let's start by changing the default property of sales and profit to show currency. So once we click on sales, we're going to see an option at the very top called column tools. So it is in this column tools that we can set the default properties so that we don't have to change this all the time. So under format, we're going to change this to currency and we can also adjust the number of decimal places. So for example, if we simply want zero or one or two, we can set them here. We can also find the default summarization in here. Let's do the same thing for profit. So clicking on profit, going to format, and this time around, it's also going to be currency. Now, the easiest way to create our bar chart in Power BI is simply by selecting one of these options for bar graphs at the very top of the visualizations menu. And if we want to create a horizontal bar chart, it is actually going to be this clustered bar chart option, which is third from the left. Once we click this, it simply gives us a placeholder. And in this placeholder, we can actually move this around. So as far as Power BI is concerned, it is called a report. And unlike Tableau, we can place multiple charts in a page. In Tableau, a worksheet really houses a single view or a single visualization. Multiple visualizations are created or designed in a dashboard. So let's just adjust this again. Now the subcategory field will go under axes and sales will go under values. So again, this is one thing that's different between Tableau and Power BI. The notion of axes in Tableau is a little bit different. An axis in Tableau is always going to be a continuous line, whereas in Power BI, it can also contain categorical fields. So in here, let's just drag over a subcategory to axes and let's put sales on values. So this is our very basic bar chart. Now, if we wanted to sort this data, we can simply click on the three ellipses on the top right corner of the visual and right away, we can see some options that we don't necessarily see in Tableau. So for example, right away from here, we can export the data from the visual. We can show the chart as a table, and I'm going to demonstrate this shortly. We can also spotlight, which means that it's going to highlight this one visual. And if there's other charts in the same page, it's going to dim all of those. And the option for sorting ascending or descending, they're here. And the sort by allows us to sort by specific fields. So in here, if we wanted to sort by sales ascending, we can simply choose that. Okay, let's sort this descending now. Let's color this by profit. And for us to do that in Power BI, we have to go to format. Notice that right under visualizations, there are three options. The first one is fields, the second one is format, and the third one is analytics. So changing the color is going to be under format. And there's a lot of other options in here. We can change the axes, we can add zoom sliders, but to change the color of the bar, it's actually going to be under data colors. Some of the options available for us is we can also decide to show all. And what this means is it's going to give a color for each subcategory. So let's just demonstrate that. So in here, if we turn this on, we can see all the values of the subcategories having their own color palette. So we can change them manually one at a time. Let's turn this back off. So if we simply wanted to color the bar by profit, instead of manually selecting a color, we can click on this icon right beside it that says FX. And in here, we are going to color it based on a field. So on the drop down, we're simply going to select for profit and it's going to be based on the sum of profit. And we may want this to be diverging values. So I'm going to select diverging, select a color palette for the negative values, select a different color palette for the positive values, and perhaps in the center, maybe either just a gray or a white. Let's click OK. If we want to remove the color legend, we can simply just toggle legend off or turn it back on if we want it there. Power BI also has zoom sliders. So in here, if we turn on the zoom slider, we're going to see at the bottom that there's a slider and it actually allows us to zoom into certain areas of the chart. So for example, in here, we can kind of zoom it in. Let's turn that back off. Let's adjust our title. So in here, under title, so perhaps changing the background color and perhaps the font size. So let's change this change the font family as well. 
Notice sometimes that analytics disappears and that means that maybe we have clicked away from the chart. So we simply just need to click on the chart again. So in the format menu, we can also adjust our labels. So in here, our data labels, we can turn that on and we can see right away that right beside the bar, we have all of the corresponding sales values. We can make adjustments to this formatting. So in here, let's simply adjust the size. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Under position, we can decide to put that inside end, outside end, which is a default. You have inside center and we also have inside base. Another option that is readily available is actually allowing the labels to have a background so it's more visible. So if we turn this on, we can see that there's a faint background behind the label. So let's just simply change the position again to auto so we can see that background. Power BI also has default tooltips. So as we hover over the bars, we can see the values that are associated with that bar. In a future video, we're going to look at how both Power BI and Tableau allow visuals to be part of the tooltip. But for now, it's going to be the native tooltips that we're looking at. If we want more values to be shown in the tooltip, we can simply go back to fields and there is an option in here for tooltips. So we can simply add more fields under tooltip. And the formatting, if we want to change that formatting, it's going to be in the format option. So for example, if we want profit to be shown in the tooltip, simply drag this over here. And as we hover over, we should see now both sales and profit. Now let's have a quick look at the show table option. When we click on this three ellipses and show as a table, Power BI actually very easily allows us to add a text table to accompany our visuals. So we can simply just toggle this anytime we need to. We can also adjust the arrangement. So right now it is stacked on top of each other, but there is an icon that allows us to switch to a vertical layout. So in here, so let's go back to the report. So last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a filter. In Power BI, we are going to use a slicer. So let's just adjust this first. And this is that slicer. And for our slicer or our filter, we simply want to select specific years. So in this case, we can expand order date from the fields. As we expand it, we're going to see a date hierarchy. So we're just interested in filtering this by year. On the fields, we can expand order date and we can drag over date hierarchy as a field that will populate our slicer. So we can remove day, month, and quarter. We can simply leave year and to change the control because by default, this is going to be checkboxes. If we want to change this control, we can go to the format options. Under selection controls, we can adjust if we want this to be a single select only, a multiple select, or if we want to turn off the select all option. Another interesting thing we can do for formatting is actually under the general options, if we change the orientation, so right now it is vertical, but when we change this to horizontal, Power BI actually creates a grid and allows us to use these grids as similar to buttons. So in here, if we simply wanted to have 2017, we select that grid, 2019, 2018, 2020. Maybe let's just rearrange this now. And I think the final thing we were not able to add yet is the average line. So let's just click on this chart again, go to analytics, and this is where we can add a constant line, a minimum line, maximum line, average line, median, and percentile lines. So let's add our average. So under the average line in here, we're going to add one and it's going to be based on sales and we can also adjust the formatting. So now that we're done, let's take a look at this visual again. So this is what we created in Tableau and this is what we created in Power BI. They're pretty similar. There are some minor differences in their features and functionalities, but I hope this gave you an idea on how these two tools are similar and how they're also a little bit different, but both of them can deliver similar visuals. They're both very powerful. Thank you so much for watching. I will have additional videos comparing other kinds of charts and other visuals and other features between Tableau and Power BI. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Thank you again for your time and I'll see you again next time.